making of objects from powdered metal is thousands of years old. Powder metallurgy is a process still used in modern industry, however. A number of different techniques are used, but the principle is the same. Metal is made into powder and then compacted into desired forms using high heat and pressure. Today, powder metallurgy parts can be found in a multitude of different fields. The most common technique for producing metal powder is atomizing. Atomizing consists of pouring molten metal through a high pressure stream of gas, usually argon. The resulting spray produces very small metal particles which are collected in a container below. Since air can react with the metal and cause contamination, processing is done in inert gas, usually argon, and strict production controls are maintained. Particles produced range in size from about 1 16th of an inch to dust. Screening segregates particles below a certain size. Larger ones, which can contain pockets of argon gas, are returned for remelting. These particles, if not removed, could affect part quality. Sintered Metals Incorporated in Boston, Massachusetts, makes powder metal parts for a wide variety of uses. The powder is first mixed in a blender. This is done to obtain maximum mechanical compaction. Smaller particles tend to fill in the gaps between larger ones. Bridging can occur if large particles are forced against each other, like the stones in an arch. These can resist compaction and cause voids in the final product. Mixing also causes dispersion of alloying elements when added in powdered form, though pre-alloyed compositions can be atomized. When the cycle is finished, the powder is placed in drums for the next step in the processing. In conventional powder metallurgy, the powdered metal is cold pressed into a compact in a die. Particles are forced together and bonded to each other, in effect, creating one piece of metal. Dyes are designed to produce near uniform density in all areas of the part. The compressed powder is next heated or sintered below its melting point in a furnace. This results in nearly all the remaining spaces between metal particles being closed. In many cases, final parts can be produced without the need for further processing. When necessary, some parts can be machined after being run through the furnace below normal temperature. This allows machining to be performed when the metal is below normal sintered strength and it can be cut more easily and quickly. The parts are then put through the furnace again to bring them to full strength. Hot isostatic pressing, or HIP, is another powder consolidation process. HIP combines pressing and sintering into one step. Wyman Gordon Company in Worcester, Massachusetts is a major producer of HIP components. Powdered metal is received from the processing plant in specially designed stainless steel containers under inert gas pressure. A sample is drawn from the container and sent to the lab for testing. Stainless steel components are welded together to create a container designed to accommodate the final configuration of the part, taking into consideration such factors as shrinkage due to heat and pressure. This one is for a Rene 95 turbine component for a jet engine. Containers can also be made from mild steel, glass, or ceramic. The finished container is checked for leaks by passing helium gas over the seams. If helium seeps into the container through gaps in the seal, it can be detected by a specially designed monitoring device. The volume of the container is next ascertained. A water displacement technique is used by Wyman Gordon. This involves submerging the container in water. The amount of water displaced after subtracting the weight of the can is equal to the internal volume. 
This will indicate how much powder is necessary to fill the container. Since oxygen in air can react with the powder and occupy needed space within the container, air is removed, creating a vacuum inside. A storage container with the powder inside is secured in place above the hip container. The powder enters the hip container through a vacuum inside connecting metal tubing, aided by gravity. Powder is measured by weight. The container is vibrated to achieve maximum mechanical compaction. This normally makes the powder about 60% dense. Containers are placed in specially designed holders to support them during hipping and then stacked. Thermocouples are attached for monitoring workpiece temperature. Stacks will be carried by a transporting manipulator beneath the shop floor. Prior to hipping, containers are placed in a preheat furnace. They are then placed in a hip autoclave. These can cost millions of dollars and can weigh up to 100 tons with walls one foot thick. Pressures of up to 15,000 pounds per square inch are generated with the use of compressed argon. Inert gas is used so that oxidation will not affect the furnace or part. The temperature inside the furnace can reach 2,250 degrees Fahrenheit. At these high temperatures, the material is more easily deformed so that particles can be pushed into each other. These temperatures also increase the rate at which particle bonding occurs. The parts are removed when full bonding has taken place. Different alloys require different amounts of time. Once removed from the autoclave, parts are allowed to air cool. The container on the left is one that has yet to be placed in the autoclave. The one on the right has been hipped. Notice how much it has been compressed due to extreme heat and pressure. Parts are usually heat treated to optimize their metallurgical properties. Since the container is bonded to the powdered metal inside, it must then be machined, chemically dissolved, or broken off in the case of glass or ceramic containers. The hipped metal form is subjected to non-destructive testing. A visual inspection is made for obvious surface flaws. In ultrasonic inspection, the part is submerged in a fluid. A transducer, positioned over the part surface, produces high-frequency sound waves, which pass into the part through the fluid as the part rotates. Flaws are indicated on an oscilloscope as the sound reflects back into the transducer. In fluorescent penetrant inspection, the part is bathed in an iridescent dye, which seeps into any surface defects. These are illuminated when the part is placed under an ultraviolet light. Components are usually machined to final shape. There are a number of unique advantages to the hip process. For one, hip can compact very strong alloys that could not be formed by conventional means. Also, mechanical properties are uniform in each direction. And because of equal pressure in all directions, hip can produce more uniform density, strength, and shrinkage throughout the part. Capital investment is high, however, and separate containers must be produced for each individual hipped piece. There are also small variations in the sizes of hipped forms. Powder metallurgy parts are subject to a number of defects. Seen here is a microscopic photograph of a normal powder part without defects. Voids are microscopic open spaces within the compact. These can be caused by incomplete compaction or by trapped inert gas. Small discontinuities are produced if the powder particles fail to unite in certain areas. This may be a result of foreign material in the powder or incomplete bonding. In 
inclusions are foreign materials within the powder. This type of defect can cause local weaknesses, which can serve as crack origins. Powder metallurgy techniques offer some unique advantages over conventional forging. The first is material savings. Powder metallurgy has a greater ability to form metal into more intricate shapes, requiring less material input and little or no machining. This can result in up to a five to one savings, depending on the part design. Secondly, powder metallurgy can produce parts made from such materials as carbide or composite materials that cannot be forged. With certain alloys, powder metallurgy is also capable of producing properties equal to or better than conventional metal processing. These include tensile strength, stress rupture, fatigue, and creep strength properties. Various unique metallurgical properties can also be produced. These include less than 100% density, a desirable quality for certain applications, a combination of different alloys in different areas of a single part, and dispersion strengthening in which strengthening materials such as hard oxide particles are dispersed throughout the metal. In conventional powder metallurgy, metal is made into powder, pressed in a die, and sintered, thus producing a final shape of adequate strength. In hot isostatic pressing, the powder is placed in a container and subjected to high heat and pressure simultaneously in an autoclave. Using the hip process, higher strength and greater densities can be produced. Powder metallurgy an old way to produce quality parts for industry in a modern world.